I'm Mark Mengi. I'm Alex Skolnick. We are from Metal Allegiance. And you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, it's Joe from Loudwire, and I'm here with, you know these guys by now, Alex Skolnick. Hello, hello. And Mark Mangi. What's going on? From Metal Allegiance and Alex Skolnick, you know, from a bunch of other stuff. Test Who? Alex Skolnick trio, all that good kind of stuff. And it's but, good to be back. We feel like regulars. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nearby your hometown. We're moving. You guys. Yeah, Just yeah. He's, right the street. Yeah, he's Long Island on Brooklyn. Yeah, come by any day. Oh. If you want. Yeah. Battle of the Bridge. Right. Or the tunnel. Bridge, I should and, say. Tunnel. Yeah, bridge, and, bridge and tunnel series. Yeah. <laughs> so just saying Brooklyn was your home and you're actually going to be going home to St. Vitus in Brooklyn yep. where Metal Alle Allegiance is going to be playing Deep Purple's Made in Japan live album <laughs> in its entirety. Yep. Um, we got ourselves in. That's your fucking fault, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what I heard about this is that it was originally supposed to be another Made in Japan that you guys were supposed to be covering, and then it kind of warped into something else entirely. Uh, sort of. Well, yeah, I guess uh, the other made, made, in, made in Japan, as in Made in Iron Maiden, was inspired by Made in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, that still, still may happen at some point. All right. But uh, the timing of this made a lot of sense. <laughs> it's it's gonna all right, it's gonna happen. Um, but then you know, uh, Deep Purple got inducted, finally, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah should have happened twenty years ago when they were eligible. A long time, ago. yeah. Um, and then you know we just took a listen to the record and just you know we've all ha owned it at some point, but you forget just how mm -hmm. amazing it is, and uh, it just seemed like a, a good time to uh, take our chances. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Now, one of the most interesting things about that is that they take songs like Space Truckin' and they turn it into a 20-minute jam. Right. So what is it like, um, you know, obviously the members of the band are spread out all over the place, um, trying to rehearse, practice this on your own, and then come together with all of those loose arrangements and the spontaneity of everything. Well, it's very tough, but you can't do every note. You mm -hmm. can't mimic the album, but there, we, you know, we will have some cool jam sections. Um, you know, it's also going to be interesting because we, we don't usually play with keyboards and we're not going to have <laughs> keyboards, um, but we have two guitars. No, we have three guitars. Ron, Ron has two necks, <laughs> is man. like three, yeah, he's like two guitars and he does some crazy stuff um, and so between his two necks and my effects and stuff, I think we'll mm -hmm. both, yeah, we'll play, pay tribute to John Lord as well as, uh, as Richie Blackmore. Definitely. That's um, funny, I'm getting... Um, like just right before this interview started, you know, Mark Gossageta texted me. He said, "Man, this fucking record." Because <laughs> we're him and I, you know, at least for Mark, Mark and I, I'm a huge Purple fan, and you know, the great debates can be made on you know the whole Blackmore not attending the Hall of Fame, and you know, and I can argue all day on that. But when you come down to actually listening to their music, um, especially on a bass player perspective, I never realized how great Roger Glover is as a bassist and then to take it a step further I never realized how great of a rhythm section Roger Glover is with Ian Pace mm -hmm. and how locked in those two are especially in a live setting you know they're freeform jazz blues jamming going on in these 20 minute renditions and those two are just like glue the entire time but also you know they the musical quality on that is so good I, mm -hmm. I don't yeah, with respect to all, all the other bands around at that time, I really think like, the musicianship on that record is, is special. It's ta you know, towering. Yeah, there's just something intangible about live Deep Purple records. I mean, like Lars said at the induction ceremony, mm -hmm. like, there's a reason there's so many live albums exist from Deep Purple. I mean, from any incarnation of the group. And it's yeah. just when you listen to it, and it's weird, they just kind of walk on stage, mm -hmm. talking to the mic a little bit, just start playing a little loose, and then all of a sudden the show starts. And um, it's very weird, because usually a band will walk on, you know, they've got these triumphant things planned, but Purple just kind of walked up there and then yeah. just tore the whole place apart. That's another thing that's so great about that record. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a bar gig. Exactly. It is, I mean, especially um, Strange Kind of Woman, towards like the middle end, middle towards the end of that song, Ian Gillen's laughing during the vocals. Oh yeah, there's, I mean, crack it. there's some joke going up on. hysterical, something's going on. Mm -hmm. And the band never loses a step, he's laughing hysterical. And then that record came out in 71, I believe, is when it came out, so I guess it was recorded 70, 71, somewhere around that yeah. time. Listen to Ian Gillen's vocals, what he's doing. I mean, that, my opinion, 
that created heavy metal vocals, the way he's screaming and... Oh, yeah, and child I mean, in time. Holy shit, it's just, you know, they, they transcended uh, music at that time and were well, well, well ahead of their time. Oh, um, yeah, and also um, John Lord, you know, I mean, he, you know, he's, he's amazing on the songs, but he, he has these um, solo sections, especially, you know, I'm thinking of the beginning of Lazy, Mm -hmm. Which you know he he swings. Oh yeah, he swings hard, and uh, so does he and Pace together. Their hookup is really good, and uh, you know I I have I'm fortunate enough to work with different genres of musicians. I work with mm -hmm. artists outside of metal as well that um, approve. You know I know jazz artists that approve of the playing on that. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, yeah what um, John Lord is doing with the organ. He's really, you can tell, he's inspired by you know, great organ players, you know, like Larry Young. And, um, and I th if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I read that um, this great younger jazz um, organist, Joey DeFrancesco, actually purchased that organ. So <laughs> Joey DeFrancesco, he's a, you know, anybody in the jazz world knows his, his stuff, but he actually bought his organ, John organ from, from that. Yeah. Wow. So it's... Yeah. It's still out there. Uh, yeah, can't get more of a resounding endorsement yep. than buying the guy's organ.